Well, good afternoon. This is uh, Rotary Matters for another month. Uh, we've actually made a little bit of a blue this month. We've turned up a little bit late, but hopefully there are people that will listen to this Rotary message uh, again. I'm Alistair Osborne. I'm from the Carston Rotary Club, and I have with me Vicky Pickering, also from the Carston Rotary Club. Uh, Vicky uh, has been on... You, were you on Rotary Matters before? No. No, it was another uh, yep. reason you were here, yes. So she's very familiar with uh, the uh, cameras, aren't you, Vicky? Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Anyway, we, we've got a few notes here and a few things to talk through uh, of what happens at uh, club level. Obviously, it's, this has come around very quickly, as does Christmas every year. It comes comes around far too quickly. Uh, but it's nice to be here and... Uh, give thoughts from the Carston Rotary Club uh, and what we've done this year, a little bit of what's coming up. Uh, and Vicky and I, as best as possible, will share uh, the programme. But uh, Vicky is coming in, has been a president of our club before yes. and is coming in as president again next year. We've had several repeat presidents. It's a, a, a not an easy time for volunteer organisations, especially post-COVID. We have uh, had a couple of new members in recently. and We've got another prospect, uh, we hope, uh, soon, but we, we certainly need more members. Uh, I've done this before with Georgia Osman, who's a local lawyer, and she's in her... What, how old? Twenties. She's in her twenties, uh, and it's great to have someone young and enthusiastic like Georgia. She... she uh, would have been on this programme apart from our messing up of the times. But Vicky is coming in as President-elect, so it's appropriate as you go into your year and six months' time that you uh, perhaps share your thoughts on where this club is going. Uh, Vicky will talk uh, particularly about Talent Wairapa because many of you will have heard about the cast and promoted Talent Wairapa, and it's Vicky's baby. <laughs> Literally, and uh, she's done a wonderful job over the last five or six years uh, giving uh, opportunities to young people in the world, well, young people particularly, although Talent Wairapa is open to anyone with any degree of talent, be it artistic or musical or whatever. But we'll hear more about that later. Uh, this past year... We, we have been uh, meeting at Almo's bookshop uh, and that's been quite successful. It's been quite a nice uh, atmosphere and uh, I, I think it's been a good change. Uh, we moved from another venue in Carston and uh, uh, it's been a, a very convivial environment, hasn't it? It's a nice environment and the food's great yeah. and it's we can talk amongst us more. Yeah, yeah. It's a good, yeah, I enjoy it there very Cause much. Because the, so. the whole basis of, of Rotary, uh, for those that perhaps are not aware, we, we essentially meet to enjoy one another's company. And if that meeting is successful and we are enthused by it, we end up doing projects. And that's uh, the primary goal, probably, of Rotary is trying to serve the community in various ways. And uh, we're going to run through a few of those. Uh, ways that we involve ourselves in the community shortly, but uh, yeah, we, we're not running badly. No, I think we should be proud of things we've done and ha and our meetings. Our meetings generally run on time. Yeah, we have speakers, we have a good meal, we have a good chin wag with each other, and a good laugh. But we certainly have it. We have a bit of a problem connecting with the community. At at times, people wonder what we. Do. I think people know we're there, uh, but it'd be nice to have more people in, involved in it. And every service club is having the same sort of problem. But uh, getting younger people involved is difficult. Uh, Georgia is charged with doing social media, isn't she? Yes. And she's doing well with that? I think so. Um, we need to get more into social media and more out there of what we can do and how... Even though we have weekly meetings, you don't have to be at every meeting. You can be one out of the four and then still help out in all the different activities, plus give us new ideas how yeah. we can help the community. 
it's interesting, Steve, our current president, Steve Lawrence, uh, I, th- I haven't heard the results of the meeting. Have you heard how he got on meeting with Lyons? Because it's good to think that there's no. a, a, a comparison of ideas or a sharing of ideas between local groups. I uh, think they're down to three ideas they're going to work on yeah, and good. see which ones that we can join together and do for Carterton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And that's, that, that, that's pretty positive. We've worked with the Lions before uh, when we uh, were a doctorless town and we worked together with them to uh, purchase the what was uh, then the new Ron Wakeland Centre. Uh, and one of our very early projects was with Lions uh, setting up the uh, caravan park. And, oh, right. uh, how, yeah, yeah. Little before my time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hard booze one was before my time, but the <laughs> the medical centre. No, that was well, that was forty years ago. So that I, I was in the club then. I wasn't. Sorry. But how long have <laughs> you been a member? Twenty. Twenty one, I think. You came from Petoni to here. Yeah, from Alice Town. Alice Town, yeah. very specific. Alice Town. Yes. <laughs> I know Alice Town well. My mother used to buy go to the green grocer in Alice Town because I was brought up in Lower Hutt too. Yeah. Uh, community activity, interesting speakers. One of our the things that we do at our meetings is have a speaker every week. Essentially, we we meet weekly. But Rotary clubs recently have been given options as to when they meet, how regularly, and what form their meetings take. And our club has always wanted to continue with a meal, uh, a meal on Monday, and meet every week uh, because I think. It's, we're, we're an, an older membership and that companionship has always been enjoyed. Uh, uh, so we've persisted with that. Uh, but there are quite a number of clubs around New Zealand now that meet uh, fortnightly. But I think if you meet fortnightly and you miss a fortnight, that's a month. Yeah, yeah. Like if you meet monthly, that's two months for your next meeting. And the breaks down of con- the connection... Yes, it's a little bit like scheduling yeah. a uh, a talk on a radio station. Yes, very much Which we do so. every three months <laughs> and we seem to get out of kilter with it. So, Whereas uh, if you meet week- weekly and something you know it's comes up, up yeah. you c- you'll be the next week. Yeah. And you're sort of always in, in with what's going on or, you know. Yeah. And I think it's a better way to go. Well, I, th- I, I think it's interesting that our club has continued to vote for it, but I think it's probably one of the impediments to younger people wanting to become involved. And I think mm. the, the, the thing that we're trying to do is to give an opportunity for younger people to be flexible in their involvement. Uh, I know in Marston South Club they have a husband and wife who uh, pay one sub and they come along one each time. I think they might have young children, so they share it, which is a rather nice way of doing oh, it. So there's, there's yeah. different ways of skinning the cat. Uh, but I think they generally will work with people to get them in and work with how it suits them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One thing's good though with ours that if you come, you're a, one of the people who travel on the train because we had four of us travelling on the yeah. train at one stage. That first train in works into getting to Rotary. Yeah, yeah. You used to just get off the train, come straight to Rotary, and then go home. Yeah, that train, that train. So that worked quite well. Yeah, yeah. And, of course, it's one of the reasons why uh, uh, Carthen Rotary started as a lunch club because it was made up of people, mainly Main Street people. But we've only got one person from Main Street and Rotary now, which is a little bit of a shame. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It it started as a lunch club, as was Masterton. Uh, (coughs) Speakers, who have we had in the last? Gwen Gwen and Bruce Levick, did you enjoy that? Yep, they were good. Yeah. And that, that was some, um, we think for teachers being like our teachers here, but they weren't. No. They were more, way more involved in the Solomons. And they seemed to really enjoy it. Yeah, they were interesting. Bruce and Gwen, uh, uh, listeners if, uh, will remember them as being, uh, <coughs> Gwen was a headmistress at St Matthews and Bruce was the headmaster at uh, Rathkeel for a period, uh, both born in South Africa, but they really loved mm. that uh, 
uh, work in the Solomons and work they did in other countries. I think they went to, might have gone to Pakistan or Bangladesh or other countries as well uh, after they retired. So they've made their contribution. But Solomons yeah. was fascinating. Yeah. I mean, their living situation was really quite... Uh, but it's the whole thing, that things that we take for granted. Yep, yep. They didn't have. And and that's part of the part of the fun of belonging to Rotary is hearing the variety of guest speakers and what mm -hmm. people uh, uh, do to uh, uh, satisfy the, uh, the their wishes. Uh, we had all the major political parties. They spoke at uh, beforehand, which was interesting and probably one of the ones that. Uh, I enjoyed most, in a way, was Celia Wade Brown, simply because she's had such a diverse career. Uh, yeah. Very, very interesting uh, person. I'm not saying the others aren't interesting, but that was just a little bit different. Uh, she was different. different. She yeah. was different, and she'd been the the mayor of a of a very large city, well, a relatively large city in Wellington. Uh, but no, that was good. But it, that they all, and of course. Uh, yeah, they, they all uh, made a good contribution, and it allows us. Th th there's a common thought that uh, Rotary is apolitical. Yeah. Well, it is totally apolitical in that it can never, ever uh, take sides on a political issue, but uh, it does encourage people to become involved in their local communities, and it could yeah. be it could be from any quarter that they become involved. But they keep those. They can expound those thoughts, but Rotary cannot. Uh, so that's it, it's quite a simple line as far as I'm concerned. Uh, John Bunny, he was interesting. I, w I wasn't there for we, that one. Yeah, no, he spoke on uh, Citizens Advice Bureau. Uh, John will be known to many people in town. He was an, uh, an insurance agent here, and, of course, the Bunny, Bunny name is uh, synonymous with uh, the Wairapa. There was a, a large uh, group of uh, Bunny family members here and uh, John's one of those, but he's, I think he's chair of uh, Citizens Advice Bureau, but he spoke very well about that, and uh, that was interesting. Lisa Matthews, I didn't, were you there for Lisa no, Matthews? No, I wasn't for that one either. No, I'm, I'm, I missed that one, unfortunately, but I believe she was very good. Chris Hollis, Rocks and Rivers, that was... That was, was incredible. Yeah, it was fascinating. <laughs> yeah. I think it'd have us all going looking around our river to see what's there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think, I don't know about you, but I didn't realise we had such a variety of different rocks. Yeah, yeah. And, and where, where they've they, come from. And where they came from and how many million years ago they yeah. came here. Yes, yes, yes. It's pretty staggering. Because uh, <clears throat> the, the extraordinary coincidence there was that association that I'd had with the... Because I, I did the International Toast that night. Yeah. And I changed my mind when I saw Chris walk in with this bunch of river rocks because it immediately reminded me of uh, that Italian girl who was studying geology oh, at yeah. Victoria University. And she visited uh, Carson. And to cut a long story short, Chris told us that she had returned to Italy, then immigrated to New Zealand and was was actually his boss yeah. <laughs> at the university in his latter years. Uh, so that was rather interesting. She came from the city of Milan, and it, part of Rotary's role is offering educational opportunities for uh, international, well, for students internationally. And we've had four uh, awardees out of our club over the years. Uh, so we've had our fair share, because country clubs sometimes don't fare quite yeah. so well in that area. Uh, so Chris Hollis, that was very interesting. Uh, yeah, rocks, volcanic rocks, and where they came from, I couldn't believe it. And, and the different coloured rocks, those yeah, yeah. red ones. I'm trying to remember what he said about them, and I thought, oh. yeah. No, well, I've, 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 I've perhaps forgotten some of the detail, but it was yeah. extraordinary. They were quite different, yeah. and they ended up in the same river, yeah. Uh, Monique Leashaw, last week she spoke on long-tailed bats. She said you know, didn't see a picture of one, but you heard all about them. Well, yeah. they're, 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 we the don't fact that they're down um, Dalefield Dale Dale Field Road, yeah. and they had a whole. There's different areas in there where the bats are. And there's oh, yeah. conservation land and council land down there. Yeah. So they're feeding into her property, and she's got the bats there, okay. and the different equipment she had for finding them. Okay. Okay. And hearing them. Yeah. 
For, and hearing them. Yeah. Yeah. So that they can, you come into her property to feed by the sounds. So there were quite a few out at night. Is it bush? Yeah, they've got some bush. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it's because they've got bush and pastures that it's obvious where they are. More oh, obvious. Is that right? It seems. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I, I never realised that we had bats. Well, I know there's a number of variety of bats in New Zealand, but I always imagine them to be deep in a cave somewhere. No. Well, it doesn't seem to be. No, no, no. And then somebody said they'd seen bats in Carterton's main street. Oh, really? And I thought, oh, OK. They hadn't been drinking. Didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I'm sure you see them everywhere. Yeah. And that, that's the speaking program. And it just gives people a bit of a flavour of the sort of things that happen. We learn about community organisations or just general interest topics, people that mm. have done things that are different. And we learn uh, something every week. Uh, and that's, uh, I think it's a very important part of the programme. We also have a meeting off. To, we have we have committees in uh, Rotary. Uh, we have what, what, what committees do we have, Vicky? We have pro projects and the projects ones are the ones that for our fundraising. Then we have a community, which is all our community projects and um, like breakfasts and schools um, and all that. And what was the other one? Oh, total blank there. Sorry <laughs> about that. Well, we do vocational service. Yeah. Which is really the basis on which Rotary started. I mean, and I, came into the, I came into this club as my vocation was crop farming. What yeah. was yours? Finance. And, and then it became mortgage broking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but break now, it down. now we don't have classifications to people, no. which is a bit of a shame because it tends to, it, it it was a good way of getting a mix of people in the club, and we could never have two members. We there were there were ways in which you could get more accountants, and you could have a. Uh, a public accountant and you can or a add, small business uh, and a, yeah, the, so yeah. there were variations but it was a good way of, of getting you know, different uh, members and, and not just a room full of farmers yeah or a room full of lawyers oh. can't think which is worse <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's an interesting question <laughs> I don't want you to answer it, Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to. Uh, community projects. Uh, well, this is... I, I, I just put a note here. Uh, talent celebration. I can't remember. What did you call that? Showcase. A, a showcase. Vicky, about six years ago, convinced the club that it was worth promoting a talent quest in the Wairapa. And this is for the whole Wairapa. It's not just yeah. uh, for Carsten. And it's been uh, very, very successful and well supported. Uh, but it's always a, a, a bit of a battle because we don't have large numbers here. But I've been terribly impressed how people have come back and the quality has lifted and lifted and lifted. So yeah. talk about your baby. So we have three we have three categories now, 14 and under, over 14, and groups. Group is two or, two or more people. Um, it's prize money, good prize money, $1,000 for the two, two groups, 500 and two lots of 250 for the younger ones. We have um, our heat is at, or auditions are at Carterton School. Then we have two SUMI finals, one at Kuranui and one at Makura. Then the finals at the event centre, and generally we like the performers to have their own music, their own, you know, their own written songs if they're singing. Um, they've got to come out and act professionally. The hall is usually full, and we have an MC there, and it just goes. Oh, we try to um, live stream it, and it goes off really, really well. Then we had the showcase later, which was some of the winners came in to be on the showcase. And that was just also to give them another go and to make money for Wellington Free Ambulance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's been very successful. And uh, 
I, who was the young person that came through, been there for about three or four years, started as a, what must have been an eight-year-old, and came through every year that won last year? Uh, very, very impressive. But uh, it, 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 it's, it's got shades of Britain's Got Talent about it yeah. that, that someone comes through and hits the high notes and they did very well but Vicky's done a marvellous job in getting a balance of judges as well too so there's four I, judges yeah. and they share it round and they share their comments uh, it's usually very very constructive uh, it's a good I have a good committee behind yeah, me yeah, really yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the committee you know they all just take on their jobs and get on with them yeah and it's so if anyone out there is listening to this, and they have a talent, it doesn't matter if it's musical. One of the funny, one of the most interesting ones was the man with the spoons at the yeah. very first show. Sadly, he's died now, but he was very good playing the spoons. So anything, a, a novelty event, it could be dancing, it could be, it could be reading, it could be doing anything, but just doing something differently. Yeah, uh, acting. And someone might have a special talent. Uh, and want to uh, push it or simply display it uh, for entertainment value. And there's lots of people with lots of talent to run. Yeah, yeah but, they just have to go on the Talent Wairapa website and that's how you um, you can find all the information. Also, we're looking for a main sponsor still for yeah, talent yeah. for next year. So if anyone's interested. That every program has had a name sponsor? Yep. Yeah, yeah. So far. And that's got a, a, a value behind it, uh, but it's a it's a program that really depends on sponsorship. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We're not out to make a lot of money. We're really out to bring these um, performers forward. Yeah, yeah. And help them get out there. Yeah, and and I th it's it's interesting how uh, school kids have actually progress their careers. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very much so. No, that's good. Okay, well, that's a, a, a bit of a, a bit of a success story for Carson, but not a not not a big money winner, but giving people an opportunity that yep. they would never normally have, and that's great. Firewood raffles. Yeah, they go well, I think. Yeah. Um, and then, but when you think about it, we keep the price the same: two dollars a ticket or three for five. So it's a good price, you know. Price. Yeah. People just donate money and they don't want the firewood because they've got something that's some other form of heating. So, well, it's it, it it's a regular fundraiser for the yeah. club and it brings in quite good money. Okay. And it's so it always gives me uh, a great deal of pleasure to sit there and just chat to people as they come in. They're very spontaneous to it, and especially mm. if you're advertising a cause. Uh, is always a good thing, and yep, uh, I'd agree. as some of the items, things we do, uh, are all helped by our firewood raffle. So hopefully we can mm. continue that. But we have a few less people uh, capable of cutting the firewood. But hopefully, we, <laughs> hopefully we can. Uh, are you trying to say we're getting a bit older? I'm, saying, I'm trying to say we're getting a bit, <laughs> a bit older. Uh, can uh, oh, we had a quiz night. Yeah. And that went off brilliantly, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. And that money went to Wellington Free. Yeah. So I th for the new building. I think they netted five or six thousand dollars. Eight. Eight thousand. Yeah. That was a great contribution. It really yeah. was. Well, the club made it up to eight. It was seven five or something. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that was a very good result. That's a lot of fun. Quiz nights. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with that. So I think that's probably will become an annual event. And of course. Yeah. We're a bit lucky in Carson having that event centre because it's uh, pretty well placed and uh, it's a pretty good facility. Very much so. Uh, candy floss. When I joined the club 47 years ago, they, they had a candy floss machine. Old Gordon Pankhurst, the electrician, he, he, he found the candy floss machine and it's been there ever since. It's not the same machine, but no. uh, <laughs> it's, it, it does exactly the same job. We've been and we few. raise perhaps up to four or five hundred dollars each time we go out and just give it to the school we're working for or the cause. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it's a nice thing. It, it, there is a little bit of negativeness about sugar, uh, and I think we all understand that. Uh, 
but it's nice to put a smile on kids' faces and they but then enjoy again, it. a bag of candy floss doesn't have that much sugar no, in it. No, it doesn't. Really. doesn't. There's probably just as much in a, in a bottle of Coke. Oh, I think you get more in a bottle of Coke. Yeah, possibly. Or in a, a bar of chocolate but it's, or it, something. It, it, it's nice. And yeah. I'll tell you what, it's rather surprising how willing the parents are to tuck into it as well, too. Yes. <laughs> so that's the example they set. Dictionaries in school, that's something that we've done for a number of years. We've got a... Uh, a member who, who a, a, a Rotarian who used to be a, mem a member in Wellington, Wellington South Club. He's now a member in Auckland, but he actually worked him, his way through to president of Rotary International. We've only had two in New Zealand. Bill Boyd's his name, and he started off in a book bookshop in Wanganui, and he's always had books has been his life. And he actually was. People may remember Gordon and Gotch, which was a big distributor yep. of books. He was New Zealand's general manager of Gordon and Gotch. So he developed this uh, pictorial dictionary, Os Osborne's Dictionary, uh, and it's been a project we've had for, I don't know, it must be 10 or 15 years now. Say, it's a long time. Long time. So every year our club, and many clubs do, present to year four children uh, of uh, a user-friendly dictionary with uh, lots of pictures in it uh, and uh, very very simply laid out. So that's quite a, a good project that we I do. I think also because some kids don't have books and when you give it to them, to them it's the only book they actually own that's theirs. It's, it's interesting. It's yeah. it, 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 sad to see that situation, but they do. They. It's a fact though, isn't it? I, th I, th I think it you is. Know. So that's that. That's a good project that we continue with. Uh, breakfast in school. Oh, you're, that's, you're, that's one of your babies again. <laughs> yeah, Stephen and I do on a Wednesday at Carterton School. They have breakfast in school four days a week. Usually you have toast with either jam or marmite or Vegemite or honey and Milo. So we do it an hour every Wednesday. Great fun and. You know, you pick the kids up on their manners and they get to the stage, you don't have to say anything, please and thank you, and a big smile every time. It's just a fantastic feeling. Yeah, good on you. Love doing it. Yes, yeah, nice. Uh, the Stefan that uh, Vicky mentioned was a member of our club. He's a local chiropractor, and it's sad that he's not, uh, hasn't continued his membership, but it's lovely that he's continued doing that. And that's another side of Rotary. We do have a, a small, very useful group called Friends of Rotary. Yep. Very uh, loose, ad hoc group, but people that have been members uh, or have simply just happy to put their hand up to turn up and do a job on a day, like do an hour of the, of the raffle or help with candy floss or any or of those. Or the book fair. Or the book fair, which yes. Which is out one other big thing, isn't it? Yes, and it is. Those it, friends of Rotary are really important. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the ventures, yeah. of course. Yeah, and well, that's another thing uh, that I haven't uh, noted down here. The book fair, give that a, a good plug because that's been good for the club. The book fair is basically <coughs> us recycling books. So what happens, you want to get rid of books, we pick them up, set them all out in the event centre, we sell them, you take them away, read them, you send them back the following year, and they just keep recycling. Yeah. The kids' books are fantastic. We have a big corner full of them, and they all go. Yeah, it's been a great project, and yeah. Deidre O'Flynn has driven that in recent years, although it's been a, it's been a, a good effort by most club members, they get yep. stuck in behind that. Uh, and it seems to me that books are almost making a, a reappearance. Very uh, much so, yeah. Yep. yeah. Uh, they are, so that's a good one, and th that's quite a regular sort of project that service clubs do. Uh, Lions run one up here in Marston and yeah. reg all, all the time, which is nice. We we have tried to uh, see if there's an opportunity to have a regular uh, spot where we could operate from on a on a on a weekly or a regular basis, and it hasn't quite worked. And I think the the, the thought was because the uh, has been quite a bit of empty shop space. It might be possible, but uh, it's yeah, it's, mm. it doesn't seem to be that easy, which is a bit of a shame because. But I think though, having it once a year, everyone waits for it. Yes. And they all store their books up and wait for us yeah. to say we're ready. There's an expectation that it's coming. Yeah, yeah that's right. So. And because when we open the doors on the day, 
these queues and queues of them outside, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just, it, it always intrigues me. It's like those. a sale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, there's, and there's a few dealers that want to get in and yep. try and get that special book that they think that someone else won't recognise, yeah. which is very often the case. So that's a, that's a good project, ongoing project. Uh, and, and the thing about these projects is they're not hugely demanding on members. They're, they're possible. Yeah. The only difficulty with uh, things like the book fair is the lifting because yeah. there's a lot of manpower needed. And the Venture Scouts, of which your family is involved, uh, they've they've been a great help. Uh, we have used hockey teams in the past, so yep. there's always a group wanting to raise extra funds, and we're happy to help them and and give them a generous donation to be part of it. Uh, so that mm. that's a good integration with community. Uh, I've put down here Innovative Young Minds. It's a project we've been. Uh, Ever since it started, it's a, uh, a partnership between the uh, Hutt City Council and the Hutt City Rotary Club. Uh, and they do a STEM program over about five or six days, and it's for girls only. Uh, and so we ask for nominations. Uh, or the organisation itself actually sends applications out to schools and then they are referred back to us, we interview them. But every time we've sent someone away, uh, they've come back completely and utterly motivated and possibly had uh, career changes influenced by their attendances at Innovative Young Minds. They go to Wellington, they may visit the Maligan Institute, they'll visit uh, engineering workshops, they'll do... Um, uh, visit all sorts of industry and real functioning things based on uh, uh, science, science technology, and technology, engineering, yeah. and isn't it dumb? What's the medical? End? Is no, it? no, science. STEM. Anyway, it's yeah. it's it's quite a straightforward yeah. fourth one, but I can't remember it. But it's very very good, uh, and it's amazing how many girls are becoming involved in science and engineering and technology. It's really getting girls out of thinking they have to go down this one path. Yeah, yeah. They can have a go at everything, isn't it? And they're certainly terribly capable of it, yes. And yeah, the other one, we did so. this last year for the first time for a good number of years. We sent, uh, uh, he was the head prefect, I think, was he, yeah. for Waikol, away to uh, what used to be known as Summer Science School. Uh, it's a technology forum run in Auckland every year for a week, and that was outstanding. He came back, and he almost changed his mind on uh, yeah, what, what yeah. he was going to do. Yeah, so that was very good. And that's the, the beauty of these programs, there's a lot of effort gone in to make sure that they are, they dem they're hands-on, so yeah. they, they really get a feel for what uh, those sciences are about. And it's an, another thing that they've tried to do with the air show on that first day was when they bring all the school kids in to have a yeah. look at what's on display there. So, I mean, I, I I wouldn't mind if every dollar we raised in Rotary was given to advance the education of people, or young people. Yeah, because uh, But we tend to cover all ages, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we do. We do. Yeah, it's good. Which is a good thing. Uh, another project and, and part of the uh, belonging to Rotary is having a bit of fun uh, and having fellowship functions or friendship functions, whatever you call social functions. We could yeah. go to the Gladstone, we could go out to the pizza place at Norfolk Road and have an evening there. Uh, but there's one coming up and it's uh, really promoted by uh, a very broad Scotsman who's a member of our club. Uh, and he promoted a Burns Night a couple of years ago. There's another one this week. Uh, so no, 26th of January. 26th of January. Uh, so that's something to look forward to, to have a bit of fun. I can't think of Christmas other... Christmas Parade, you missed. Yes, I've got a uh, Christmas Parade. I've that's got this it. weekend. Yes, that's this weekend. Did I not write that down? Certainly You've written I, it down, I, but you... But that's a, that's a big event for us. Carton Rotary has what done the Christmas parade for how many years? Years and years. Yeah, it's probably the end of twenty years. I've been dressing up floats for a little while for that, and uh, I've got to go out tomorrow morning and pull the sleigh out of the shed at home and get ready to go <laughs> in, the, in the parade. 
and I think we're going to do candy floss as well that day. So, but hopefully, it's, it's the format's changed somewhat. Uh, Pam Robinson and a group of people have marshaled the Christmas parade for many years. Pam's now not a member, sadly, but uh, so it's it's being run differently this year, and that it's joining in with. Is, is it a council promoted? No, uh, it's. A community, a community event yeah. to recognise Christmas. So we're running the two events so together. So we've got the Christmas parade, then um, community in the park, is it? Something like that. Is it? Is it? So okay. they're going to yes. have food trucks there and music. Yeah. And so it should be good fun. So yeah. we're hoping that people come out to the, the, the Christmas parade actually starts and uh, down the main street at 3 o'clock on Sunday afternoon and uh, finishes at Carrington Park. Yep. Uh, so it, it should be a good afternoon. So uh, it, th the format is slightly different, but the function of the parade will be no different to uh, normal. So that, that should be good fun. Uh, and then what other projects have we got there, uh, Vicky? I can't think of it in case I've, I've forgotten to write a few things down. We're bound to have forgotten something yeah. and we'll be reminded. But we're, we're just... But we work quite hard for a small club. Yeah, we do. We do. Well, I yes, I think so. And uh, we, we get a few things done and keep a, put a few smiles on people's faces, yes. And we do things like um, a lot of things for Carter Court. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's looking well, after the elderly. There's requests come through all the time, and yeah. largely we meet them. And if they revolve around schools uh, and education, uh, they're a bit of a plus. But just one of the areas that I want to uh, just touch on here a little bit is the internationality of Rotary, because it's uh, it's in about 180 countries. Uh, there's over a million members and uh, about 30,000 clubs. It's a struggle membership in the Western world is struggling a little bit now, but in the third world, uh, Asia, uh, India, uh, South America and places like that, it's still growing. Uh, so it's, it, it, it varies a bit. And I've just, I've got a, a couple of pieces here that I, I want to mention. There's been quite a big fundraising effort to support Ukraine. Uh, and obviously their problems are, are well known. Uh, and they actually had Rotary started there in 1935 and then it was disbanded during World War II because they were occupied and it became a, a communist uh, country. Uh, and then in 1992, after it uh, became independent again, Rotary started. So it's interesting that uh, the, the, how it's grown back there. Another example of that is China. Uh, there was Rotary in China until 1949, and then Mao Zedong and the revolution took place, and Rotary ceased to exist there. Uh, but it has returned, but not really just for expats that live in the major cities. It hasn't returned as well as Rotary would have wanted. Another interesting uh, project uh, internationally is shelter boxes. I don't know if you can see that uh, picture of shelter boxes. This is a project that started out of England many years ago uh, and uh, it started a, a, an English club uh, when the Skopje earthquake took place I think in Sarajevo or somewhere. There was a lot of problems so this club developed an idea of shelter boxes. What's the other one we do in our club? We do emergency, emergency bo boxes, yes, that's right, yes. Which we have to make sure, you know, they're two different ones. Yeah, yeah. A shelter box, I think, is valued, for example, I think at about $1,500. Yeah. An emergency box, which has got a... It's ideal for the Pacific Islands, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Whereas the shelter boxes, isn't that with the tents and yes, the pots yeah. and pans and all this? Yeah, yeah. And because we don't have, we're not political, we can get them into countries when there's disasters and wars or whatever, yeah. and give them a roof over their head and something to cook with. Yeah, and, and the shelter box is particularly good for some where there's a colder climate. Yeah. Whereas an emergency box that we've sort of developed in New Zealand, really, it started in the Eastern Hut Club uh, a number of years ago in response to uh, storms in the Pacific. And uh, we used to make our own ones up. 
Oh, okay. we, we used to get, get a box and it would be Vicky's job to provide the cup and saucer or, to, or a yeah. set of or panicums or whatever. Uh, it would be my job to get the rope and the, a hammer. You know, the yeah. club used to divide them up like that. Now they've standardised them, which is really rather sensible so that they know if you're sending a container away or you're asking the army to put something on a ship to take up to the islands, yeah. they know what they're going to get. So it's quite a sensible way of doing it. Uh, there's another uh, program here, RILA, uh, which is International Rotary Youth Leadership Awards, uh, and that's a, that's a special program and very, very good and very popular. We haven't sponsored too many uh, RILA awardees recently, sadly, uh, but the courses carry on. We've concentrated mm. on the uh, RIPEN, which is... Uh, a, a slightly different uh, program, but achieves the same result and, and yep. lifts the self-esteem of young people that uh, go along and they thoroughly enjoy it. Uh, they come back with way more confidence than, than it, they went away with. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, yeah. Just to go back to the uh, IYM, the girl that we had last year, she came to Rotary to speak. One of the obligations of getting a Rotary sponsored course like Ryla or Rypen is that you visit the club and just mm. have a few words on uh, what you what you what you experience there. The girl that went to IYM made it very, very clear that she was not comfortable about coming back and speaking to the club. And then she came back, she bought an uh, a laptop with her uh, her father came with her, although he really didn't influence too much what she said, but she was probably the best presentation we've heard. She was completely uh, moved by the experience she had. I thought it was really special. Uh, and she said, no, there's no way I'm going to talk to you. Uh, before. But, yeah, yeah. Before, which was rather nice. Yeah, it was good. Uh, what's this next tag I've got? This is quite interesting because Vicky has just mentioned... Uh, the fact that uh, Rotary uh, does not get involved politically. We think about all the dreadful things that are going on between Israel and uh, going on in Gaza at the moment. Yeah. Uh, if you have a look at a list of... Uh, uh, the, the Rotary is broken up into districts all around the world. And in the uh, eastern Mediterranean... There are districts that will include different countries. The Le Lebanon will be in uh, the same district as Syria, as uh, Israel, as Jordan. You know that group of mm. countries there. So that district governor, who happens to be the leader of that district, just a one-year appointment, uh, he will be visiting all those different countries, and sometimes they're throwing bricks at one another the whole time, but Rotary walks through the borders and talks, yeah. and it's it's a really special thing. And what happened in... Uh, it started in the Philippines in about 1983 or 81 or 2, and then developed into a full-blown program was Polio Plus, where Rotary... Uh, decided that it would uh, try and promote uh, a polio eradication program worldwide uh, and it was successful in doing that and partnered with uh, the United Nations and the World Health Organization to do a lot of it. I just want to read a little bit here. This is from Pakistan. It's written by a Rotarian. Uh, the April cover story of Bigger Than Polio was of great interest to the people of Pakistan and to the community of Rotary members around the globe. The effort made by the Pakistanis, uh, Pakistan's female vaccinators, indeed bigger than polio, going door to door all over Pakistan to vaccinate children is a real challenge and they deserve a big round of applause. The women's strategy for vaccination is based on mom, mom, mum to mum relationships as mothers in Pakistani culture play a vital role in, in the progress, success and peace of the entire family and especially of their children. Sometimes the workers come across people who still do not understand why polio vaccination is important. The women take their task as an opportunity to change mindsets. People all over the world know how 
that we Pakistanis perform our duties with passion. And it, it's interesting because we've had a real problem in Rotary getting the vaccine into areas uh, because of religious beliefs in the, yep. nor in the north of Nigeria. Uh, there's been uh, subversion in there, uh, suggesting that uh, the rotary, the, the uh, polio vaccine, has been uh, would sterilise men, and issues like that. So it's been uh, breaking some of those uh, those barriers down has been quite a, a, a mission on Rotary's part. So I thought that was rather nice in Pakistan that the, the women, uh, as they do in most countries, Vicky. Yes, uh, they run the world. They run the world. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also um, people of today, well, like countries like here, we don't remember what polio is like. No. The young don't. You know, the iron lung and all that. And, yes. you know, I remember seeing people who have had polio and how they were affected. Yeah. But our generation would be probably the last generation that would remember that? Yes, I think that's right. It was, hasn't, I don't know there's been a polio case in New Zealand for many, many no. years. My I mean, kids wouldn't, or my grandkids. Yeah. I mean, you probably... Do you know Brian Burke in town here? I mean, Brian's a wonderful example of uh, how a polio victim deals with life. Brian is an accountant in town here. I think he's probably retired now. Uh, Brian uh, has been a great swimmer. Uh, and well, he's he's traped up mountains. He's done mm. all sorts of things that you wouldn't have thought were possible. But uh, he's done distance swimming. Uh, amazing, mm. yeah, a great example. Uh, but I think because of that, when you say there's polio still overseas, people will go. So what's polio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's been a very important mission. For I think so. Rotary. I agree, hundred percent. And, and the, I'm, the, I'm quite proud how of the yeah. work that Rotary's done with polio. Yeah. Rotary has uh, an international uh, fund agency, as it were, called the Rotary Foundation, uh, and polio has come, um, come under that umbrella, and if Rotarians donate to the Rotary Foundation, by and large, they can get a, uh, a tax deduction. Uh, but the interesting thing is that about 15 years ago, the Rotary Foundation was the world's largest private uh, private funding uh, trust uh, and it's now been taken over by uh, people like the Gates Foundation and, mm. and the, the tech world has virtually taken these over but again the partnership between Rotary and that group has been uh, beneficial because if we give a dollar uh, to uh, towards polio uh, the Gates Foundation give two mm. so that's a pretty impressive Trump up, but we're just battling to get those last few cases. I think you can just about count polio cases on, well, I think there's been little surges in yeah. Afghanistan and uh, Nigeria, Pakistan, some of those countries. There have been surges recently, but hopefully uh, they're getting there. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> uh, we're getting close to the end. What have we got, Vicky? We've got about... Uh, Perhaps five minutes to go. Uh, the other, the other area of inter international interest is uh, uh, disaster relief. Uh, there's all sorts of things go on in the the world by, and we we hear much with climate change and what anyone believes of it, uh, or how you think of it. Rotary's often there uh, mm -hmm. to work with uh, agencies uh, and as Vicky says we can cross those borders quite easily and get uh, get, uh, get the, aid, aid in. But the thing is we don't push ourselves so we just do it and that's it. Yeah. Nobody knows what we're doing we just get it done and it's probably our biggest problem. I think you're right. As we don't sell what we do, we just do it. That's right. Uh, I've just had another look here. I've just lost my place a little bit. It doesn't matter. Uh, th there was a, a group of articles in one of these uh, Rotary magazines that went round the world, and it, it just showed some of the uh, the, the breadth of international 
uh, work that goes on in Rotary. No, I've I've lost it. So I think we'll we'll draw this to a, a close, Vicky. How uh, what what else have you got to say? Because well, basically, if anyone is thinking of joining Rotary, come on along. We would love to see you. Just get hold of Steve at Elmo's and come and join us for a couple of nights and see what we do and see we, if you're interested. We, we uh, if anyone wishes to come along, they can usually get us through Facebook or through yep. Elmo's books. In fact, any club uh, that you, yep. any Rotary Club, there's four of them in the Wairapa, the South Wairapa. There's Carston, there's uh, Masterton and there's Masterton South. Uh, and we all function similarly, uh, but essentially mm. it's uh, a, a pleasure to go and meet with uh, different people. I've been a member for 47 years, and I've, I've always enjoyed going along because I talk to a group of people that I would never normally mix with, and that's what's uh, special. Mm. And, and if, those, if the chemistry's right, uh, the other things follow. Uh, so... If anyone is interested, please, in Carson particularly, contact Steve at Almo's Books. Or if you simply Google the Rotary Club or an area, I think if you Googled Service Clubs Carson or Service Clubs Wairapa, you'd probably come up with an option because Lions would have... We'd, we'd certainly love to see you, but please, if you uh, f want to meet people, any of these community organisations are useful. We think mm. uh, w we're, we're all right, uh, but that they all have a, an important uh, function. Uh, so I think that's about all. And, but please join us at the Christmas Parade on... Uh, Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock and for the festivities in the park, the food stalls and that sort of thing yep. in Carrington Park. Uh, and I think on behalf of all Rotarians in the Wairapa, we wish you a very Merry Christmas. Uh, and I think, Vicky, the last words with you. Merry Christmas. Have a safe and happy New Year. And please, think about joining Rotary. Good girl. And uh, travel carefully, be safe. Uh, Merry Christmas to everyone. Thank you.